everybody so I just wanted to do a quick demo and overview of this little laser raster scan projector from Aliexpress now the reason I bought this was because I was just you know browsing random crab on Aliexpress as one does and I happened to notice this thing for sale it was a hundred and forty bucks or I paid hundred and twenty dollars after a coupon and the reason I bought it is because it appears to be the only actually new laser raster scan projector for sale currently there's a Nebra Any Beam, which was uh, going around a few years ago, two or three years ago, but that doesn't seem for sale anywhere anymore. So this was really the only option for anything new, and the price was, you know, low enough to be kind of an impulse purchase. So to start off, uh, well, the menu's all in the interface. It's entirely in Chinese. And this is kind of functions as the on button. This is left and right or up and down and this is your enter or select. And just to go over the I.O. of this, it's just got a mini HDMI on one side, audio jack for to pass through to speakers, and a USB-C charging port. However, I don't believe this is actually properly implemented USB-C, as it will not charge from like a proper uh, USB PD adapter like the one that came with my Steam Deck. Now let's go ahead and get a output hooked up. Okay, so I got it hooked up to my laptop now, and it's just, uh, I don't know, maybe about 14 inches away, 18 inches away from the board I'm projecting on here. And uh, it's producing an image that's maybe 13 inches diagonal right now. And here's uh, a first sample of the quality, and I will say the speckle and white balance are not representative of really how it looks in person. Uh, I'm just projecting on some foam board right now and that combined with this camera just kind of makes it look worse than it actually is. However, as you can see, the image quality really isn't that great. The convergence is, happens to be a little out of whack on mine. Particularly, it seems like the blue is a little slightly too low or the some, something making up the yellow and green, so maybe perhaps red and one of the green lasers just isn't quite aligned right. And that seems to be luck of the draw, I suppose, because, I don't know, somewhat of a silicon lottery except for laser alignment. And there's no uh, software adjustments that can be done to fix this. Now, as you can see, also, this focus is rather soft. It is sharp enough for everything to be readable at 720p, though, as, as you would ex hope, at least. Unless you go, like, really, f really, really tiny fonts. But as you can see, the control panel here old control panel on Windows 11 still uh, it's it's all readable despite the blur and convergence issues this Chrome home page illustrates that a little better too with the convergence you can just kinda see the blue in particular just isn't really well aligned and also you can see uh, some of the artifact strange artifacts you get in this like um, this Google search bar here you get this kinda purplish streaking across the gray, dark gray background and also I've noticed that Dark gray kind of tends to be inconsistent and purplish, like you'd see on an, perhaps an older OLED at low brightness. Okay, now here's somewhat of a demo in low light conditions. I just It's not pitch black, but much better than the full ambient lighting I was showing before. And again, the colors aren't really perfectly represented as how they appear in real life. It's just really hard to get that dialed in between the camera and the projector. One other artifact I found interesting, which was very analogous to like a CRT that doesn't have the best high voltage regulation, is when you switch from a dark image to a bright image, the size actually changes a bit. It expands horizontally when you go to a very bright or all white image like this. And I assume that's something to do with the little MEMS mirror being heated up and distorting a little bit, but I'm not 100% sure. It was just something I found interesting. It's really not something that's noticeable in any sort of normal use, but or at least for watching content. Now, Carl Gutag of KG On Tech did a good write up of one of these projectors back in 2015. It appears to use the same module as the one in this projector, despite the eight-year gap in time. He did mention, however, that 
he said Flickr was a serious problem with the product, and one in seven people said it gave them headaches or other problems. However, I find this a bit confusing, as I am quite sensitive to Flickr, uh, particularly even if it's 60 hertz progressive on a CRT monitor. I find that quite distracting, particularly on a white image or white background. But I really struggle to perceive any sort of flicker for this. And he mentions the scan process is 60 hertz interlaced, which I believe to be true based on a patent he linked in another article from uh, Microvision. But there is no noticeable interlacing artifacting, nothing comparable to like what you see on a CRT monitor. I believe that might be partially because of how this scans in both directions. So it scans from, uh, has a visible scan from left to right and right to left, where on a CRT it's only left to right. In addition, perhaps the soft focus and blurriness of the image reduces the any perceptible interlacing with the, because the lines will be overlapping. However, still, even when you're moving around like a a black box on top of a white background or anything like that, which would be very noticeable with interlacing artifacts on a CRT monitor, it, it just isn't noticeable. I, I can't perceive any of it. And also, uh, I tried slow motion recording with my phone, but uh, I couldn't detect or see anything there, just a rolling scan mess. Now the one thing this projector does truly shine at is motion clarity or motion resolution. I don't believe this camera will represent it perfectly because I can't dial in the shutter speed exactly, but uh, in person, the top 60 FPS bar is just perfect. There's, there's no discernible difference in sharpness when it's, sta when it's standing still or when the UFO is moving. And there's no blur, there's no smearing, there's no artifacting, it's just, it's just perfectly smooth and perfectly clear, or as clear as the focus will allow it to be. Now this is one last demo. This is recorded uh, with about a 50 inch image projected size and a, in a pretty dark room, not pitch black, but quite dark. And this is probably about the size limit where it might be comfortable in a room like this. Uh, it probably appears brighter on camera than it does in real life. Although you could probably boost up to about perhaps 70 or 80 inches if you're in a pitch black room. Okay, now that the demos are out of the way, let's do a little teardown. Okay, so as you can see, there's really, under the first layer, there's really not much of anything, just PCB and a thermal pad connecting to this back case, and this is actually machined out to transfer heat, so it's, it's doing something. Whoops. Okay, it's just a couple screws here. Okay, so the battery is stuck to the projector module with a thermal pad. There's a thermal pad on the other side of that too, so the main heat sinking must be going through the case because I can't imagine too much heat is transferred through the battery. But here is the projector module. There's a thermal pad on it. There's not anything underneath it, really. So there isn't much to see here.
And what I said, it's kind of, I am kind of questionable about how new this is, given how this looks. Uh, I do wonder if it was maybe pulled from another product and recycled into this unit, because I know that's somewhat of a common thing for these Chinese electronics manufacturers to do, but hard to know. But all I can say is it doesn't really look like I'd expect something new to look with this tape residue and just kind of marks all over it. Here's a look at this PCB if you're interested. And don't want to undo all these right now, so this is just the little board with, uh, I believe, yeah, just just handles the power input and audio. Not too much going on there. And this board right here. Uh, let's see if we can see that. Yeah. Just a simple board that handles the HDMI input. Not sure what the little chip is there. Lontium. Probably a HDMI controller chip. And I think that's as far as I want to take it apart for now. I could theoretically take this apart further, and I may eventually to try to perhaps shim the shim the blue laser potentially to see if I can improve performance of convergence, but it's kind of a shot in the dark. I, I don't really know how badly I want to break risk breaking it. I did open it up further once before though, just I removed this cover, there wasn't really much to see there, uh, because just uh, there's a lens array, and behind it however, I believe about right here, is where all the, the five laser diodes are located, if it is the same as the one that KG on Tech had.